Hello students, so today we are going to learn third part of the chapter 7 that is plant growth and mineral nutrition. In this, we are going to learn photoperiodism, short day plants that is SDP, long day plants that is LDP, day neutral plants DNP and phytochrome vernalization or yarrow visualization. Now, come to the second slide. Here, I added few images and animation images. Start, starting from the left part, we can see nitrogen, phosphorus, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, magnesium, potassium, calcium, all these minerals which are present in the soil and the nutrients are required for the growth of the plants. Also, here, I added another image that is nutrients required for plant growth. Here we can see I divided as CHO and PK, the important macronutrients, essential ones. Also, other than that, for secondary nutrition, you did calcium, magnesium, sulfur. Also, we can see nickel, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum and chlorine, which are also needed as micronutrients. On to the right side, we can see a simple animation image which shows the molecules along with the nutrients being absorbed by the root and is passed down to the various parts of the plants. In the second animation, you can see I highlighted the root part of it. That is how these minerals and nutrients, they are absorbed by the root hair from the root hair to the root, we can say primary, secondary, tertiary and then to the plant parts. Moving further, again simple image showing a plant's response to change in length of day and night. So as we are going to learn further about the photoperiodism, the light required or depending on the response of the light in the day, night, how the plants bloom, right? So, which we term as photoperiodism. So, depending on the light present, the growth of the plant of flowering of the plant takes place. Now, coming to the detailed part of photoperiodism. Higher plants reproduce sexually by producing special structures called flowers. Now, this as you already learned earlier that flowers are the reproducing organism of the plant. So, this part which helps to reproduce sexually as a special structure present in the plants. So, plants exhibit transition from vegetative growth to reproductive growth during which flowers are produced. So, as we know there are different stages of phase. So, initially it is a vegetative phase where the plant grows and then comes the reproductive phase phase where the flowering takes place and this flowering then as we know leads to the formation of the fruit, the flower etc. So from the flower formation of fruit taking place and various processes which I learned in the earlier chapter reproduction in lower and higher plant that is the fertilizing process, the ovule formation, the ovary formation etc. Further like vegetative growth Reproductive growth is also influenced by several environmental and nutritional factors. Among the environmental factors, light and temperature exert profound influence on flowering. The influence of light is also known as photoperiodism and the temperature is vernalization. Now, as we learn about the vegetative growth followed by the reproductive growth. Now, for this both whether it is vegetative or reproductive, the factors such as environment and nutrition are very, very important, right? Now, if you consider the environmental factors, that is mainly light and temperature. So, here in this part, we are going to learn this light and temperature. When we say light, that is photoperiodism. If you split the terms, photo means light, periodism, the period taken uh, for the flowering of the plant, uh, in the presence of light, whatever amount of light is present during the daytime or during the entire process. Further, temperature. 
so for temperature it is termed as vernalization again i added a image over here showing the long day plants and the short day plants when you say long day plants if in simple words where the requirement of light or presence of light is more whereas short day plants the availability of light may be lesser and critical day length that is a particular time which is required now moving further light as an environmental factor influences germination of seed vegetative growth photosynthesis as we go step by step the initial part is germination which is an essential factor and is environment plays a important role for the vegetative growth from the formation of seed from the seedling then the plantlet and further vegetative growth of various parts of the plants and then once the growth takes place then the photosynthesis is carried out with the help of sunlight and the other raw materials such as carbon dioxide water in presence of chlorophyll right now light as a factor three aspects quality intensity duration of light that is how much amount of light you are obtaining that is good quality clear light intensity the amount of light which is present at the given point of time or on the day where the intensity is high or low duration how much time the availability is light as we know during summer season the light availability will be more or in winter season it will be less in comparison and the intensity also affects by season so it is a duration of light that has profound effect on flowering in higher plants the term photoperiodism was used by garner and allard in the year 1920 so we can remember students about the term coined by garner and allard that is photoperiodism they were studying the flowering behavior in the plants that is soya bean and maryland mammoth variety of tobacco they found that soya bean plants flowers during late summer and tobacco variety during winter irrespective of the germination and growing season so you can see a small change or deviation from the usual flowers or plants they studied effects of different temperatures nutrition soil moisture etc in respect of flowering none of these were found to regulate flowering so what they found was the flowering was not affected mainly because of temperature nutrient soil or moisture okay there were some other reasons what is that will come to it here again i added a image that is effect of photo period on flowering that is midnight noon day where the light is more short day plant long day plant where you can see the flowering whereas midnight noon day short day so you can see again the uh, midnight the light availability is very less and the noon day uh, the light availability is comparatively very very low so flowering may take place in certain plants here the flowering does not take place then noon interrupted night means at times the light in, in, inter, uh, interruption may be there because of which that flowering may take place in the long day plants may not take place in the short day plants we can see very well in the three images where midnight light availability low uh, uh, in the night time high during the daytime here during the night very less light is available and the third part there is a interruption in the availability of light now moving further however experimentally they found that exposure to specific duration of light that is photo period had profound influence on flowering they examined the effect of day length on flowering by using artificial illumination so what they found by the various experimentation they carried with the uh, nutrition light temperature everything that is exposure to specific duration particular time period which affects the flowering part so they use artificial light to illuminate they concluded that relative length of the day was most crucial in the growth and development of flowers to which they coined the term photoperiodism now as they saw that the light is an important factor in the growth and development for the flowers 
so they coined the term photoperiodism that is uh, the light availability accordingly the growth or the flowering taking place based on the photoperiodic response plants were classified into three categories short day plants sdp long day plants ldp and day neutral plants that is sdp ldp and dnp so it was categorized into three parts based on how the light is available for the plants accordingly the growth may take place or it may affect the flowering process so here effect of duration of light on flowering process so you can see short day plants the critical period long day plants and the day neutral plants in case of day neutral plants we can see flowering taking place in both the plants in case of long day plants uh, the here the plants is blooming here it is not short day plants in one of the pot it is blooming in the other it is not or during the time period now do you know organs for reception of photo period that is stimulus leaf is the chief organ for receiving the photo period or photo periodic stimulus as demonstrated by Knopf in the year 1934 defoliated plants will never flower or not flower even if the plants are exposed to proper duration of light now uh, so as the study was carried out in case of light so what here uh, now found that the photoperiodic light the main organ which receives now, until now they are concentrated on the light part and saw that other factors were not as important as light was the important part now they are trying to find out which organ or how the light is received by the plant where now identified that leaf is the chief organ if the leaf is not present it is defoliated plants without the leaf then the growth may not take place that is flowering may not take place then photoperiodic stimulus stimulus which helps uh, to stimulate growth or the flowering part it is a chemical stimulus transported through phloem and it is called florigen which is hormonal in nature. So what they found the other factor hormone. So hormone florigen is also responsible for the chemical stimulus which is provided for the flowering and this is passed down through the phloem. As we know xylem phloem which is a conducting tissue. Phloem which conducts food whereas xylem the water. Photochemical receptors in the leaf are biloproteins, that is pigments located in the cell membrane. These are called as phytochromes. So again, the pigments which are present help in the coloration of the flowers. So different coloration we can see because of the different pigments which are present in the plants. So blue wavelength of the light influences flowering. Again, here I added a, another image showing sugars which are required light circadian cycle. I hope all of you know what is circadian cycle. That is a biological cycle. Time to time it occurs. Uh, for example, if you are sleeping at a particular time period, getting at a particular time uh, with alarm, after a certain period of time, without alarm, you may get at exactly at the same time because of the biological clock present in our body. That is the circadian clock, temperature, phytohormones, flowering, stomatal development, hyponasty, elongation with growth and germination. And here, uh, just uh, how these plants, the flowering is affected by various factors. Now, coming to the first type, as we uh, just read the three types, SDP, the first one, short day plants. These plants, usually flower during winter and late summer when the day length is shorter than the critical photo period critical photo period is that length of photo period above or below which flowering occurs these are called long night plants because they require long uninterrupted dark period or night for flowering so in case of short day plants as the darkness or light required will be comparatively less and it should have uninterrupted dark period for a longer period of time so that's why the term given as 
long night plants where the light availability is very less. So, the particular time period which is required is termed as critical photo period. Second point, if dark period is interrupted by a flash of light, short day plants will not flower. Some of the short day plants like dahlia, aster, tobacco, chrysanthemum, soya bean, cochlebur, etc. that is xanthium, etc. they uh, require particular time period or minimum time period for the growth. So, as it is mentioned, in case the long dark period is interrupted by a light period or a flash of light, then the growth of flower may not take place. So, here again added two images showing the short day plants where maximum dark period helps in the flowering part. Minimum dark period will not uh, be helpful for flowering. Also, in case of the uh, long night period, if it is available, but if it is interrupted, flowering may not take place. Vice versa, the long day plants, if the short period of darkness is there and long duration of light in the flowering may take place. Whereas the long period of darkness or less light, then the flowering may not take place. Whereas if there is interruption in the long night period or dark period, then the flowering may take place, which does not take place in short day plants. Moving further, the second type, long day plants. Plants that flower during summer are called long day plants. As we know, long day plants, they require more light, which is available in plenty during the summer season, where the light availability will be there throughout the day. They require longer duration of light than the critical photo period for flowering. They are called as short night plants as they require short dark period. Now, as we uh, learned the first one, where dark period is required, in more number here the light period required more in number and short period in smaller number so it is short night plants when long dark period is interrupted by a brief flash of light ld plants can flower example pea plant radish sugar beet cabbage spinach wheat poppy etc so again here i added a image showing the short day plants with the long night plant where flowering may take place in Longer night plant, as we just saw in the previous uh, first part, again, longer light, here flowering may not take place. Interrupted one, again, flowering does not take place. But in a long day plant, more amount of light period, less amount of dark period will help in flowering process. More amount of dark period, less amount of light period will affect the flowering part. Also, if the long dark period or the night period is interrupted by a flash of light, again the flowering may take place. Coming to the third type, day neutral plants, otherwise in short DNP. These plants flower throughout the year round, independent of duration of light, that is photo period. They do not require specific photo period to flower, therefore they are called Day neutral plants, example cucumber, tomato, cotton, sunflower, maize, balsam, etc. So, here uh, the day neutral plants simply indicates that plants flower throughout the year. Again, I added an image over here for day neutral plant, the plant that does not require a specific photo period and can begin the flowering process over a range of night length. So, here you can see the long day plant, short day plant day neutral plant. In the early summer, you can see flowering taking place with the more light period, whereas in short day plants, it does not take place or day neutral plants, again it takes place with the light availability. And in the second case, where it is neutral, the flowering may not take place as it requires long day plant or more amount of light. In the second case, uh, the flowering takes place because the moderate amount of light is required. Even the third clay case, that is the day neutral plant, the flowering will take place. Now, coming to the next important feature or the character that is phytochrome. So, here Hendricks and Borthwick in 1952 observed that flowering in HD plants is inhibited, means that does not 
grow or stops the growth. If dark period is interrupted even by flash of red light of 660 nanometer, if it is immediately followed by a far red light that is 730 nanometer, then HD plants will flower. Whereas this observation led them to induce that some pigment system in plant receives the photoperiodic stimulus. These pigment proteins are called as phytochromes. Now until now as we read about day neutral plant, short day plants, long day plants. So here other than that the phytochromes are pigments which receives the light or the photoperiodic stimulus and helps in the growth of the or flowering of the plant. So this is called as what? Phytochromes. The term phyto means plant chromes, pigment that is pigments present in the plant which helps to provide stimulus. The leaves produce light receiving proteinaceous pigment called phytochrome that includes flowering. It exists in two interconvertible forms that is red and far red. When red absorb far red light, it is converted to red light and vice versa. These are located in the cell membrane of the green cells. So as we just learned about the phytochromes which are present in the plant which receive the stimulus, again the, uh, depending on the light that is whether it is red light or far red, again it helps uh, in the conversion of far red light into red light or red light into far red light which again is taken up or absorbed in the plants where the green cells are present or the chlorophyll is present. During the daytime, the far red light accumulates in the plant means starts to accumulate form. It inhibits flowering in HDP but initiates flowering in LDP. So uh, in case of short day plants, the flowering does not take place as the light received is less. But in long day plants, it initiates as more amount of light is available. Air and darkness or light dark period is lesser. Short day plant does not grow. It, it stops or the inhibition takes place in HDP. Whereas flowering takes place in LDP. During the dark period, the far red light changes into red it stimulates flowering in HDP. Now in this case, the short day plants, they get stimulated and starts flowering, whereas the long day plants, they are inhibited from flowering. So here, I added an image showing no response or inhibition in the red light. Uh, in case of the red light, the far red light, uh, which is a reversible process uh, taking place when the presence of response. Phytochrome is a plant with of plant pigment with two interconvertible forms. The two forms elicit different responses that is from red light to far red light and vice versa that is from far red light to red light. So you can see the time period 670 nanometer for red light, 730 nanometer for far red light. So be sure to understand the difference between red and far red light and the two different forms of phytochromes. Again here be sure to understand which form of phytochrome is present when red or far red light is on. So control of morphogenesis by light and phytochrome is called photomorphogenesis. Now what does this morphogenesis mean? The term genesis as always tell split up the word. So here when you say it's when you split the term genesis means formation. Morphogenesis formation of the different parts of the flower external parts. So here in presence of light and phytochrome this morphogenesis is takes place or it, it is controlled depending on the light availability. When it depends on light for the growth uh, or for the formation of the new uh, parts of the plant, whether it is flower, fruits, etc., the term is called as photomorphogenesis. That is formation taking place in presence of light. Now coming to the next one, vernalization or yarovisization that is the temperature as a environmental factor influences several physiological process including reproduction temperature as a factor has three cardinal points that is minimum optimum and maximum so as the name suggests maximum where the availability is more minimum less optimum the critical or the availability which is 
um, not more or less the optimum level if the temperature uh, is low or low temperature chilling treatment induces early flowering in plants as was evident by clipper in 1918 so by chilling treatment there is very very low temperature even flowering can be induced chowart in 1960 defines vernalization as a acceleration of the ability to flower by chilling treatment the term was coined by lysenko in 1928 for the effect of low temperature on the flowering in plants so here you can see translocation of flower induced substances which passes through the stem you can see the precursor the florigen the uh, vermalin and the high at high high temperature chilling how the uh, flowering can be induced moving further it is an influence of temperature and flowering many plants such as cereals crucifers require a period of cold treatment for flowering so yeah, as the example says cereals or uh, crucifer these species they require chilling treatment or cold treatment for flowering it is a method of inducing early flowering in the plants by pre treatment to their seeds or seedlings at low temperature now when we say low temperature it is 1 to 6 degree centigrade for 1 to 1 and 1/2 month duration so this low temperature uh, which is given for pre treatment for the seeds or the seedlings uh, to induce the flowering so such method is employed where the temperature uh, that is 1 to 6 degree for a longer period it's not for few days or a week it's at least for 1 to 1 and 1/2 months duration duration this chilling treatment is given the site of vernalization is believed to be shoot apical meristem generally vernalization is effective at seed stage in annual plants vernalization stimulus is also a chemical stimulus named as vernalin so the stimulus or stimulus which is carried for vernalization or the chemical which helps in stimulus is vernalin this can be transferred through grafting that the reversion of vernalization by the temperature is called devernalization so if this particular vernalization process is reversed or has to be reversed or it is reversed then the term coined is devernalization so here again i added a image showing vernalization and devernalization process so to see the potted plant no chilling plant no chilling planted at a ordinary temperature so in a normal temperature maybe 36 37 to uh, temperature uh, where the flowering may not take place uh, slightly germinated see chill for 2 months at 5 degree uh, centigrade planted at ordinary temperature so you can see a difference in the growth and further the growth may increase depending on the temperature which is provided at least for 1 and 1/2 to 2 months now know the scientists so as we are learning about different uh, processes like photoperiodism vernalization so some of the scientists who have worked on these experiments the low temperature induces early flowering was noticed by clippard who were working on varieties of wheat of winter wheat and spring wheat so here we can see the image of john hancock clippard then winter wheat sown in winter produces flowers in the flowering plant the spring wheat sown in some in the spring produces during summer however if the winter variety is sown in spring does not produce flowers during summer but does so in the next summer he observed that if germinated seeds of winter wheat are treated with low temperature it can behave as a spring wheat otherwise as mentioned it can be spring wheat or a winter wheat so depending on the temperature availability uh, it is considered or the spring wheat or the winter wheat can be produced he concluded that winter wheat requires low temperature exposure before the onset of flowering so you can see the other scientist uh, the chowart that is pierre chowart 
Frederick Melcher and Trifim or Trofim Lensko. Now, advantages of vernalization. That is, what are the uses of vernalization or importance? So, crops can be produced earlier. So, whatever the time period is there, we can grow or stimulate flowering with vernalization process. Crops can be in the, cultivated in the regions where they do not grow naturally. So, where natural growth is not present, so here by the vernalization process, it can be induced. So, here again, I added few images. That is embryonic when the seedling is formed post embryonic as the plantlet formation takes place vegetative again a juvenile and adult form is there here over here flora and bolting process insensitive sensitive insensitive the process uh, where different stages taking place response to photoperiodic fertilization which you can see from the seedling to the formation of the plant fertilization the second image I has added over here requirement of plants to grow through a period of cold before they can flower. So, again a low temperature is induced before the flowering can take place. So, students, I hope up till here the third part of the chapter is clear. Earlier I had posted the first and second part and the, now the third part which uh, you learn about the vernalization, photoperiodism, the phytochromes. Based on what we have learned today, I had posted the assignment questions for 1 mark, 2 mark, 3 and 4 marks. Thank you students.